Hi guys and welcome back and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Maria and I make videos about books and about language learning. And today I want to share with you guys what my favorite books are of 2022. So last year I have not read as much books as, as I wanted to, but I still had some interesting books and I just want to share with you some of my four and five star reads. And at the end of the video I will also mention some honorable mentions. <laughs> so books that were good but not great like the first five that I'm going to show you. And the first one is a little bit controversial because a lot of people uh, are divided into hating it or loving it. Um, and I consider myself uh, the latest category. I did enjoy it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's my number five. And I'm going from five to one. So one is like my most favorite of uh, the whole year. And uh, this is Penpal by Dayton Auerbach. So this book is quite special because the author of this book first uh, has written a short story and published it to Reddit and also to Creepypasta, I think. And Creepypasta is a website that a lot of people use to publish their work uh, related to thrillers and horror fiction. Um, and this is a piece of like thriller horror fiction. So uh, he first published his short story, uh, the beginning story in this book, to the website and uh, it was received very well. So he continued writing and then in the end all of the short stories were interconnected. It was all about uh, one main character that is reflecting on his childhood and telling stories uh, that, uh, about the things that, has hap that have happened in his childhood. And at the end, um, he uh, made this book with crowdfunding and uh, yeah, <laughs> now it, you can buy it as a book. So I did and I really liked the story. And like I said, it's about a man that is reflecting on his childhood and he talks about it with his mother. And they, uh, the mother knows of course more and he's just trying to figure out what has happened because he has all of these loose memories. Like we all know, we have our childhood memories that consist of um, pictures and uh, moments, but not like the entire situation that has happened because uh, that's just how childhood memories work. We forget a lot of things and we make things up in our mind to fill in the blanks. So that's what happened to him. And he tries to understand um, what all of those memories have to do with each other because he thinks that they're interconnected and that something has happened to him and to his mother. And uh, it all starts with a school project uh, when he was four years old. And uh, the school project, it was like in this preschool kindergarten class where they had to launch balloons into the air with their picture and a letter uh, in it about them. Uh, all of the children did that. And the goal of this was that over the weeks they would get letters back from their pen pals that would find these balloons. So strangers that just find these balloons in, uh, accidentally and then write back to the children. But I think this kind of projects wouldn't work nowadays in our world. Uh, I wouldn't consider appropriate maybe. But yeah, in this book that's what happened and maybe some schools did this in the past. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but it sounded like a um, strange project to, to, to do. However, quite fun, I, I think, for children. And he's one of the few that doesn't get a letter back from anyone. So he's like very disappointed. And then one day he gets a letter, but it doesn't consist of like a real letter. It's just a picture and a picture doesn't really show anything uh, particular. So he doesn't understand it. And he's still like, oh, okay, well, I get the picture, but nothing really in it. So he's still a little bit bummed, but he at least he got something. And then uh, this pen pal <laughs> consists sending him pictures and he collects them and the teacher stops even looking at them because uh, she also didn't see anything wrong with the picture. But then he also starts getting uh, other things and his mother notices that uh, he has this collection of pictures and she freaks out. But in his uh, imagination, he uh, thinks it's just about something else. He doesn't really understand why his mother is so upset. And they move and uh, she doesn't really explain to him things. So this whole book is about him trying to figure out what's going on, why they suddenly had to move uh, and um, yeah, what really happened to him and his mother. But it, this book is also about friendship. And I think Dayton described the friendship between these two boys. They were best friends from kindergarten. I think it, it was described very well. I really like their adventures and uh, about loyalty and also, also about obsession. 
and uh, how humans can be obsessed with another human and how this obsession can be pathological and turn violent. So I, I really enjoyed this book. I know it's not a masterpiece, so there's a lot of critique on the writing. I didn't really mind the writing. Some of the words that were chosen felt a little bit um, unnatural. But the rest, I think it's not too long. It's the, There's not a lot of things that are unnecessary. It's not boring. Uh, I think the writing is uh, smooth. So I think it's quite an accomplishment to start out on the internet with short stories and then publish a book. I like psycho psychological thrillers and horror fiction, so this was just perfect to read. I read it in a couple of days. The next book is also quite short. It's only 60 pages. And I do enjoy short books more than longer books. However, I do have... A couple of longer books as well but uh, this one is the metamorphosis by Franz Kafka this is the Dutch version that I've read uh, and it's the gedaante verwisseling in Dutch but the original language is of course German I have read this one in one sitting I just sat down read it 60 pages it's not long however it is not a light book to read it is quite heavy especially towards the end it gets very depressing and I was glad when it was finished, but it is also very beautiful and I really enjoyed reading it. It is suspenseful on every page. There is something going on. There is like this uh, whole atmosphere of suspense <laughs> and you really want to find out what would happen to the main character. The story is quite famous, but I will still explain. The main character is a young boy or a young man. <laughs> He's, uh, I think, somewhere around 20 years old. And he has to wake up to go to his work. But when he wakes up, he realizes that he is an insect. And sometimes uh, it is translated into, in, I think in here it was translated as um, an insect. And I think that's one of the best translations. But it's, sometimes it also translates as a bug. Uh, however, in German, the original word was ungesiever. And it means something more specific. Uh, something like really... A nasty sort of insect so yeah that's like a very specific word in German and the best translation is then uh, an insect so all of a sudden he's an insect and uh, he cannot go to work and that's his biggest trouble that he cannot go to work and uh, because he has to provide to his family he's living with his parents or better said his parents are living with him because they do not really own a house and they have money problems so they are relying on him and also his sister is living in the house and he provides for all of them but when he cannot go to work first his boss comes at home of course and tries tries to find out what's going on and then his parents find out what's going on and when they know what happened to him instead of helping him they are just very mad <laughs> because how could this happen but well, it's not their son anymore things like that so this book is all about uh, this main character Gregor that tries to provide uh, for his family and at the end he doesn't really get any uh, appreciation he, they call them a, a parasite, however, in my opinion, they are the parasites themselves because they live off him. And when he's not good enough, then he's not needed anymore. And I really felt for the main character, uh, I still couldn't understand how he was not thinking about himself, but about the rest uh, of the people that really didn't really care about him. Uh, especially his sister is very important. And I think that's the whole point, of course, <laughs> that, that, that's his um, character to do things. But I really enjoyed reading it. I think it's a, a very interesting short story. And in the 60 pages, Franz Kafka could put so much information and so much uh, storyline that I think it, uh, it felt like uh, I was reading a longer book. However, it was very short. <laughs> After reading it, I also looked up some articles about this book uh, to understand it even better. So I would really recommend it if you want to start with classics and especially with work of Franz Kafka. I think this one is not too uh, difficult. I think it's pretty easy to read. It's short and it's very interesting. And uh, even though it's very there is a very depressing atmosphere, it still has some uh, funny... <laughs> like funny situations in it as well so there's a lot to find in this book then the last one on this list that is very short the rest will be longer it's also an amazing book and it's uh, the fire next time by james baldwin 
I love this one. As you can see, I loved everything, uh, almost everything in here. I, want to I wanted to highlight every page because it was so good. These are two essays by James Baldwin about humanity, racism, uh, governments, political systems, and just about our society or the society in that time. But I think it's still applicable to this society as well, of course. Uh, it's it's really good. Baldwin's writing style is beautiful, uh, caring, understanding, but also very direct at some points. He really shows what he's thinking, but um, I don't know. The, it, I think he writes about very difficult subjects, but you never read that he is mad about something or that he... Um, he it's not... Uh, it doesn't read like a a book uh, with criticism it, re it reads as a book that gives hope for improvement i highlighted a lot of sentences that i just found very beautiful so i will read a couple of them uh this is on page 84 and i really like this sentence uh he says i do not mean to be sentimental about suffering enough is certainly as good as a feast but people who cannot suffer cannot grow up can never discover who they are and then he says, it demands great spiritual resilience not to hate the hater whose foot is on your neck and even a greater miracle of perception and charity not to teach your child to hate. I think that's um, so true, but also uh, a very difficult thing to do, of course. It's very difficult not to hate a person who is uh, hurting you or hurting your family. And uh, it does uh, take <laughs> great spiritual resilience to... Um, to live with that and not to be hateful yourself. So he writes about things like this. And I think this sentence I like the most. It's on page 52. And he says, The subtle and deadly change of heart that might occur in you would be involved with the realization that civilization is not destroyed by wicked people. It is not necessary that people be wicked, but only that they be spineless. Because when people do not care, it's even worse on when we have a few evil people. Um, when everyone doesn't really care what the evil people do, then they can do whatever they want. And uh, on the next page, um, I read, We human beings now have the power to exterminate ourselves. This seems to be the entire sum of our achievement. And he also deliberates more about the fact that we are trying to evolve as a society, or like in the world, the whole world society and to discover a lot of new things but a lot of those things are able to destroy us and yeah i think that's an interesting concept why are we focused on things that are able to destroy us so uh this whole book is filled with sentences that are very interesting to reflect upon and i've read some of them like a couple of times before i could move on to the next page this is non-fiction i always try to read non-fiction a little bit uh more thoughtfully and to annotate more and to reflect upon more and i think i will reread it soon because i i just enjoyed this book i i loved it the most from all non-fiction that i've read in uh in 2022 so i would definitely recommend it it's just a very short two essays but there's a lot of information to find in here and a lot of things to think about then we will move on to fantasy and i do not read much fantasy but there are some uh fantasy series that i enjoy one of them is Lord of the Rings, and of course, uh, in 2021, I was reading The Fellowship of the Ring. Great book, I loved it, and now I was uh, reading The Two Towers uh, by J.R. Tolkien. Uh, this is the second part of The Lord of the Rings, and uh, I like the first one better. The first one is just not magnificent, but this one is also really good. I enjoyed it. Um, in here, we read a lot about the friendship between Frodo and Sam, and especially... Uh, how they interact on their journey together because the fellowship uh, gradually fell apart unfortunately <laughs> and every every character had to go their own way uh, and they all were like working together to still destroy the one ring of course but um, they are separated and uh, you read a lot about Frodo and Sam and their struggles you read a lot about Gollum and also I really like the part about the ends which are the uh, the magical trees, the olden trees, uh, tree creatures, because they are different from the trees. And I really liked that part in the book, uh, while in the movie I didn't find it that uh, good. <laughs> I enjoyed all the parts of the movie, 
uh, but in the book they were described very interesting they were, uh, like the system how they live and how they interact with each other the great council that they have together I thought it was very uh, uh, nicely written very interesting I'm going to read this year the return of the king and then I will be finished with the Lord of the Rings and then I intend of course to read more of Tolkien's work but um, so far I really enjoyed the Lord of the Rings it's uh, it's very magical but uh, especially the parts about friendship and about loyalty and uh, just this honorable characters that are trying to do good. It's it's very just comfortable to read and <laughs> very nice to read. So I would recommend to read a lot of drinks, even if you have seen the movies, just like I have. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's still relevant to read the books because the books give more, much more information and they are just even better. And then the number one book of the year that I love the most, it's also a fantasy and it's also from a series that is quite popular but also I think uh, quite influential on older fantasy works. It's almost on the same level for me as The Lord of the Rings and I'm talking about The Game of Thrones or as the books are called A Soul and Eyes and Fire by George Martin. And this is the first book and I think it's just as good as the first book of, as, uh, of The Lord of the Rings, so The Fellowship of the Ring, on different... Uh, levels. So Lot's Rings is more like your classic fantasy. <laughs> it's about good and evil. It, it contains a lot of magic. However, this one is more realistic and you don't find here entirely good or entirely evil characters. So that's something different in fantasy. And I think George Martin is also the first writer that introduced this kind of characters. I don't know for sure, but uh, it does separate from older fantasy, as I understand. So I don't read a lot of fantasy, so I cannot say that with 100% surety. But I really enjoy that fact that you have here like real characters that could be living in our history of our world. But sometimes with some magic in it, like dragons. But the characters, they are not good or evil. They are human beings with wishes and with concerns. And uh, they try to do things to save themselves or save the people that they love. Uh, some of them are evil who try to do sometimes good things and some of them are good who sometimes have to do evil things. And one of my favorite characters in here is Tyrion Lannister who is the brother of Cersei and Jaime Lannister and of course Cersei is considered to be <laughs> all evil um, but sometimes she does good things for her children so that's uh, she loves her children of course. Uh, but for the rest, she's not a very nice character. But her brother, Tyrion, and I think at some point Jaime as well, they're not entirely evil. They just sometimes do evil things to help their family. Or like Jaime Lannister would say, the things that we do out of love, which is of course a horrible thing that he does when he says this. But yeah, I really like Tyrion. Tyrion, I think, is one of the most smart characters in here, the smartest one at least and he also i think has the most compassion towards older people especially people that have uh, a more difficult life than others because he himself has a difficult life and i really enjoyed his uh how he grew as a, as a character and i think he will grow even more in the rest of the series so i'm very excited to read more uh, of these books this year and i hope the series will be finished soon <laughs> because the last two books are not written yet uh, so I'm very excited and I hope it will be better than the ending of uh, the TV show itself because I really enjoyed the first seasons of the TV show but then at the end yeah, I just I didn't get why it should be rushed into what's this ending. But yeah, the, the characters in here are amazing. I think it's a quite a complex system of characters. So George Martin um, made like <laughs> multiple characters. Uh, this is like the most characters that I've read in a book, in one single book. And they all have their own uh, personality. They all feel real and important. And you don't really forget them after reading uh, all the characters. And I would really <laughs> recommend this to anyone who is not really into fantasy. But likes to read something more realistic in a fantasy world. So this book is um, focused on political systems and there's a lot of political dialogue in here but it's fun to read because first of all it's not our world i do not like politics in our world i think it's horrible <laughs> to read about but i like to read it in a fictional world because it's it's um 
the the government system and of course the people at charge in here are just as horrible but then it's it's a, in a fictional world so it's not that frustrating uh to read about so that's very interesting there's a lot of um backstabbing between characters uh, between political uh, systems between two uh countries so i think that's one of the strong aspects of this book the political dialogues and also how the characters interact with each other so if i had to choose two books uh, one for fiction one for non-fiction obviously it would be this one my favorite for fiction and uh james baldwin's essays as my favorite non-fiction so i would definitely recommend to read these two then some honorable mentions uh first one is sayaka murata earthlings i really liked reading this one uh sayaka murata is quite famous for her strange characters uh, i have also read the convenient store woman which was very funny interesting and um a good reflection i think on some parts of japanese society this one earthlings is a little bit more confusing and also a little bit more uh, harsh and uh, deals with subjects that are difficult to read about like abuse uh, the main character a girl is abused by her mother but also mentally abused mostly but also um, by her teacher and it's a very difficult to re thing to read uh Saika Murata writes about this in like much detail but through the mind of the main character through a uh, child's perception of the abuse which is even harder to read so the book started out very strong very uneasy to read actually um but the ending was just absurd i didn't get why it becomes such an absurd thing why the main character is acting <laughs> in this way she like loses loses all of her humanity and uh acts like a sort of an animal in her mind she's an alien which is a very strange concept to read about so the ending didn't do it for me <laughs> quite well but the rest of the book is very good so if we just skip the ending in the, in this rating i think this book is amazing but uh, yeah, it, it has some weird stuff in it. And then the next one is The Crucible by uh, Arthur Miller. This is a play. This is the first play that I've ever uh, read. I have not read uh, all the plays uh, so far, but I really enjoyed it. It's about the, um, the Salem's um, witch trials. And uh, it's very interesting to read how people were manipulated and how easy it was to <laughs> manipulate uh, people. And because it's a play, you read like the whole story in dialogues and sometimes you have this like settings how uh, the room is looking which is quite strange to read it this way in the beginning i uh, still had to get into this way of writing but uh, because of the dialogues you really feel like you're seeing a movie while you're reading uh, you see the setting before you the characters uh, there is a lot of um, attention paid to the nuances between the characters and how they influence each other to make certain decisions of course what ends in uh, a horrible witch trials uh. and the last book is by clive barker the books of blood and i do not own a copy because i had lent uh, the copy from a family member when i was reading it and i had to give it back of course but i do have another book with me from clive barker which is the hellbound heart this is a book behind hellraiser also very good i just read it recently really enjoyed it so this could be also an honorable mention however the books of blood are better it's a collection of short stories an anthology of short stories that that are quite original and uh, mysterious so he writes about all kinds of uh interesting things that i think other writers have not used uh or he's at least the first one and the stories are very different from each other so there are demons in them there are people that are just evil <laughs> uh there is like secret societies and also a weird a cultural traditions that he explores or makes up so very interesting uh short stories uh i really enjoyed reading them it's uh i read all of the books at once but that they are divided the books of blood are like consisted of multiple editions um but i had like this one edition with all of the books in them so i read them all so if you like horror short stories and horror fiction i would really uh, recommend that one too but this was everything for now uh, the sun is almost uh, coming up because i'm filming this in the morning and um, this is a good 
point to end because uh, in a couple of minutes it will be all in my face i think but thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you had some good recommendations let me know what your favorite books of the year were and i will see you next time with another video goodbye